Welcome to this GCSE Biology revision session on cell structure. We will be looking at the key structures in different types of cells today. We're going to start with the difference between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are plant or animal cells, whereas prokaryotic cells are usually bacterial cells. Um, the eukaryotes, the key piece of information there is that the DNA is stored within a nucleus, whereas for prokaryotes, it's in a loop um, loose in the cytoplasm and there might also be plasmids in the cytoplasm which are like small rings of DNA. Eukaryotes are much larger cells, we're talking between 10 and 100 micrometers, so a micrometer is a millionth of a meter, whereas for prokaryotes they're much smaller, they're between 0.1 and 5 micrometers, so millionths of a meter. Okay, this is an animal cell. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to label the different parts of the cell and write down the functions of each part. For, uh, pause the video while you do that. Okay, number one is the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm is the part of the cell in which chemical reactions take place. Number two is the nucleus of the cell, and that's where our DNA is contained because we're looking at a eukaryotic cell. Number three is the cell membrane, and the cell membrane controls what's able to pass in and out of the cell. And number four is a mitochondrion. Uh, mitochondrion is the singular, the plural is mitochondria. And the mitochondria are where respiration takes place. And you might remember that respiration is the process by which uh, sugars react with oxygen to release energy that we use in the body. Um, finally, and missing from the diagram, so if you didn't write it down, don't worry, but pop it in your notes now, we've got ribosomes, and ribosomes are like tiny dots in diagrams, and they are where proteins are made. Okay, so similarly, this is a plant cell. Again, I'd like you to label and write the functions of each part. If we've already written the function down for the animal cell, because they're the same part, then just leave that and write down the functions for the other bits. Okay, so the first parts are the same as what we had in the animal cell. So number one is our cytoplasm again, and you'll remember that that's where the chemical reactions happen. Number two is the nucleus, where the DNA is stored. Number three, the cell membrane, controlling what's going in and out of the cell. And number four, is a mitochondrion, so where respiration would take place. Now the bits that are different for this cell, it's also got a cell wall, okay? And a cell wall is what gives the plant cell its structure. Because plants don't have skeletons to help them keep their shape, they have these cell walls that are made of a substance called cellulose. Number six is the vacuole, and the vacuole is um, like a big sack of cell sap, which is mostly water with some sugars and some other minerals in it. And then number seven is the chloroplast, and the chloroplast is where photosynthesis takes place, and you'll remember that photosynthesis is the process by which plants produce sugar but from water and carbon dioxide using sunlight. Okay, again, there are also ribosomes in a plant cell, but they're not shown in this diagram. Okay, so what I've got here are three different animal specialised cells. Can you please write down what the function is and how the cell is adapted to that function? So our first cell is a sperm cell and the adaptations that a sperm cell have, first of all it's got a tail and that helps it move. It's also got 
a lot of mitochondria and that helps provide it with the energy that it needs for it to make its journey. And then of course it's got DNA stored in the head which is what gets passed on to the offspring. Our second cell is a nerve cell or neuron. And you can see that it's got a long axon, that's the very long thin bit that's coming out of it. And the reason that it needs that is because the electrical signals need to travel over long distances and it helps them travel quicker if they stay within a single nerve cell to do that. Okay, it also has lots of connections at the end. Those connections are called dendrons or dendrites um, and they are what enable it to pass on messages to multiple other nerve cells. Okay, our third cell on this slide is a muscle cell and muscle cells First of all, need to have lots and lots of mitochondria because they need lots of energy for movement. And secondly, their shape can change. They can contract and relax and that's what causes the muscle as a, as a whole to contract and relax. Okay, I've got three more cells. These are all from plants this time. Again, can you please write down what the function is and how the cell is adapted to that function? So our first cell here is a root hair cell, which is designed to absorb lots of water and nutrients. And to do that, it's got a very large surface area to volume ratio. The higher the surface area to volume ratio, the quicker that transport of water and nutrients can be. It then also has a really large vacuole to store that water and those nutrients in. Okay, our next cell type is a xylem cell and a xylem is the um, part of the stem or the veins of the plant that transports the water. And the xylem cells are different to normal eukaryotic cells because they don't actually have any contents. They are basically hollow tubes that allow large quantities of water to pass through unimpeded. And then finally, we've got phloem cells, which are the other type of cell in the veins of a plant. Um, and these are the ones that the sugars and the larger molecules travel through. Um, they have sieve elements on the end. So instead of having the full cell wall, they basically have a structure that allows those larger molecules like sugars to pass through more easily. They also have companion cells next to them, which have lots of mitochondria to supply the energy for the transport of substances.
Cell differentiation is the process by which cells become specialised cells from undifferentiated cells. Okay, they enable organisms to have different groups of cells that can do different jobs. Um, and as the cell differentiates, it develops the appropriate set of structures to enable it to do its job. Now, most animal cells differentiate at a very early age. So we're looking at between the development of the embryo and the fetus. Um, mature animals, mostly cell division is used for repair and replacement. However, with plants, they can continue to differentiate throughout their lives, which is why you can take cuttings from plants. So you could cut off a bit of stem from a plant, plant it in the soil, and it would be able to grow roots because those cells can still differentiate. But you can't grow a new arm because your cells won't be able to do that. They won't be able to differentiate still. Okay, so you also need to know a little bit about microscopes. Now, micro light microscopes, the one that you use in school, have a very limited magnification and resolution. So in order to see more detail in structures, scientists realised that they could fire electrons at a sample in what's called an electron microscope, and they have better magnification and resolution. Now, the word resolution means the ability to distinguish between different structures, and the word magnification is about how much bigger something appears. It's calculated by using the size of the image divided by the size of the real object. Thank you for watching. I hope this 